In the last episode I was giving Manuel some feedback on the clickable prototype. I even got to make some changes myself and I thought that was pretty cool. In this episode we're going to test this prototype with real skiers. Frankly, I can't wait. So what is important? when testing? We generally test with five users. Mm -hmm. Why? Uh, because with five you can already find which problems are more common mm -hmm. and you can start tackling those and then you can find more. The next thing that is important is that you pick one task that the five users should go through while using your prototype. While the user is going through your prototype, you should document this. You can do it by taking notes and ideally someone else does that yeah. for you. And you can also film it and then you can compare the two things together. Also, you should ask the user to talk out loud while interacting with your prototype. Like you just click on things. I'm clicking on the blue button. Yes, and why? Because it's blue and it looks like it might take me somewhere or oh this image I like. That makes sense but it must be weird. Can I try that with yeah, the app? Sure. I'm clicking on jumping because I like jumping. Ah, feels a little strange in the talk. Imagine if everyone did that on the subway. <laughs> Just oh I'm clicking on Instagram, swipe, swipe, swipe. That'd be strange. When the user is testing you should not help them. Because if they fail it means that we have to rework on that part. Thanks to the tips from Manu, I feel confident to go to the mountain and test the app with some real skiers. Find how to ollie. How to ollie. All right, so boxes, jumping, click on it, click on play. So I guess it's beginner. So we got five testers, but we're mostly gonna focus on one, which is Martin. I need you to know a couple of things before you try the app. So first of all, your scenario, you're a, you are a beginner freestyle skier, and you want to learn how to ollie. So I want you to find the ollie video. And as you're using the app, I want you to talk out loud. Like, I'm clicking, I'm doing, I'm seeing, I'm thinking this, until you find it. Okay, so I'm gonna open the app and looking at the stuff over here, I guess ollie should be somewhere around jumping. And when I go back, ah, this is how I go back. If I click here, yep. it doesn't work like that. How to pop, how to ollie. Ah, now I see it. How to ollie. Available offline. Can I click it? What happened? It started downloading. I click on it, but maybe here. Nice. Good job, you found out pretty fast. Yeah, it was quite easy, I think. I got four questions for you about testing this app. Okay. The first one is, how was your experience? I would be happier if it's already filled more, so I can explore more. What did you find difficult? Some play buttons were a little bit confusing because I wanted to click this one and it didn't work out, mm -hmm. just the top one. And maybe later on, when you are riding, you probably watch it at home or on the way up. And later on, you want to just go through some part of the video, like like how to ollie on skis, one minute, 13 seconds. That would be nice if it works like this and I press it. Is there anything you'd like to add to this app? Yeah, I think it would be nice to go quickly for the next lesson. Or I can scroll down and see like the next lessons over here. I can quickly click on it and open it. The fourth question is, would you use this app? Mm, definitely, I would use it because when you see stuff, it's easier to learn. So I would use it if I'm beginner. So we're back in Zurich again, and I'm gonna tell the UX team how the testing went. Honestly, the testing was pretty cool. I have feel sort of proud after because generally they thought it was cool, they liked it. How are you going to use my test data to improve the prototype? We're going to map it in a customer journey, find oh. out where the low points are and push them up. So we have our persona and our scenario. Uh, we have some expectations that the user has. We're going to review those mm -hmm. and then map his actions in the different phases that we defined. We can still move around, change the naming of the phases if yep. 
your data tells us to do that. Then we'll take the actions of the user, put them in the different phases that we have, but we can still move them around, change them according to that. It maybe goes a bit lower because oh, I have to create an account that's Everyone so hates annoying. That down. Here in blue, we now got the mood line. The person who's on ski holiday is happy, but then realizes he's not so good at doing ski tricks, so he gets unhappy. But then he googles for ski tutorials, he finds my content, he's getting inspired and a bit more happy. But then he realizes he has to download a app and create an account. Hmm, sad. We all hate creating accounts, don't we? And then he has a download, he starts learning, so he gets happier as he's learning more and more. So we have two low points. This one, but there's nothing that we can do without yeah. the app. Sense. Ideally, the whole app will target this. But we have this one that goes slightly lower when you have to create an account. So probably creating an account has to be easy. Gmail, Facebook. Another insight I got was that when they're inside of the lesson, where they can watch a video, the test subject couldn't go to the next lesson or back. Uh, when I go back, ah, this is how I go back. If I click here, yeah. it doesn't work like that. It could be nice with a quick navigation. I really enjoyed making this episode and testing the app. It gave us some good feedback so we can change the app accordingly. And in the next episode, we're going to look into the software architecture. And there is where things get real complicated. But we're going to do our best to simplify it. Like and subscribe and see you in the next video.